It may look like a small, simple wheel, yet its value rivals that of a Mercedes, and it can withstand up to 88,000 pounds of load. This is the most expensive wheel on the planet, the train wheel. Behind its extraordinary strength lies a manufacturing process so demanding that there's no room for error. From red-hot steel billets forged under thousands of tons of pressure, to ultrasonic inspections capable of detecting flaws thinner than a human hair. Join us as we explore the journey of how a train wheel is born inside massive forging plants, where sheer pressure is transformed into unparalleled strength. The train wheel industry is the silent backbone of the entire rail world. It may look like a simple steel ring, yet behind it lies a global business worth more than $5 billion. The Taiyuan plant in China alone produces over 2 million wheels each year, a staggering output that surpasses all of Europe combined. Most wheels on Earth are round and made of rubber, but train wheels are the one true exception. They are 100% steel with no rubber at all, and they are not perfectly round. Instead, each wheel is shaped like a cone with a taper of about 1 to 20. The steel carries massive loads, while the conical shape guides the wheel with precision. A design that's deceptively simple yet undeniably brilliant. The journey of a train wheel does not begin inside a forging plant, but deep beneath layers of rock that are millions of years old, where iron ore, the raw material that becomes steel, lies silent, waiting to be awakened. To reach it, engineers drill hundreds of holes into the rock, each one nearly 66 feet deep, with an allowed deviation of no more than one inch, because these holes will hold industrial explosives triggered with delays measured in thousands of a second. A single blast can break apart more than 110 million pounds of rock, bringing down an entire geological wall while keeping the ore body intact. When the dust settles, massive haul trucks begin moving the ore out of the mine, each load enough to forge more than 120 train wheels. Once the iron ore is brought out of the mine, it cannot be used immediately to make train wheels. The large rock chunks must first be crushed by industrial rollers and hammers into uniform particles, with their size strictly controlled. Too large and they will not fully melt inside the furnace. Too fine and the mixture becomes unstable. After crushing, the ore is blended with coke and fluxes inside massive mixing chambers to ensure complete and even distribution. Few people realize that the ore used to forge train wheels is completely different from the ore used for structural steel. It must contain extremely low levels of carbon, manganese, and sulfur, and even a slight deviation can cause premature fatigue cracking in the wheel. Even the grinding speed affects wheel lifespan. Grind too fast, and the heat generated alters the crystal structure, causing the wheel's rim to wear out sooner during service. But even after the ore has been crushed and blended, it still cannot become the steel used for train wheels. It must undergo steel making inside electric arc furnaces and blast furnaces where temperatures exceed 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Here the mixture is melted into a stream of glowing liquid steel, swirling inside the furnace under the action of graphite electrodes, oxygen jets, and controlled pressure. Throughout this entire process, Spectroscopic sensors, thermal probes, and real-time analysis systems continuously measure the chemical composition every second to ensure that every element remains within its allowable limits. Few people realize that a deviation of only 0.01% in composition is enough to make a wheel crack under heavy load, and just 0.5% residual gas can destroy a wheel through thermal stress during emergency braking. Only when all standards are met is the molten steel poured into molds, preparing for the forging, shaping, and heat treating stages. When the molten steel completes its journey through the furnace and is cast into solid billets, it enters the opening stage of the train wheel manufacturing process, billet cutting. Here, long steel bars stretching several meters are divided by automated saws into circular steel blanks with an allowable deviation of only a few thousandths of an inch. 
a level of precision that determines the wheel's quality throughout its entire service life. Immediately after cutting, robots lift each blank and move it into the heating furnace. Under intense heat, the steel gradually softens, preparing for the most crucial moment, its very first transformation into the shape of a wheel. Once the blank reaches its ideal temperature, it moves directly into a massive forging press, where a single stroke is enough to form the foundation of a component that will withstand hundreds of tons of force through millions of rotations along the rails. The thousands-ton compressive force causes the solid steel block to flare outward, forming a rough wheel shape with its basic hub and rim, though still far from precise. At this stage, the semi-finished form is only a structural skeleton, just enough for the metal to redistribute itself and prepare for the finer shaping that comes next. Right after the forging stroke, a localized water spray system is activated to cool the hot spots and stabilize the geometry, relieving residual stresses before the piece enters the austenitizing furnace. Afterward, the semi-formed wheels are carried by robots into a multi-axis rolling mill, where the metal is reshaped under compressive forces controlled with precision down to mere hundredths of an inch. With a system of 13 rolling axes operating simultaneously, this radial axial rolling process orients the steel's grain structure and increases fatigue strength to billions of rotation cycles, creating a wheel capable of handling enormous loads without cracking or failing throughout its entire service life. When the rolling process ends, the wheel enters heat treatment, the stage that defines the steel's critical properties. The wheels are heated and then cooled in a controlled manner to create an ultra-hard tread layer along the rim. Inside the quench tank, hundreds of high-pressure nozzles strike the rim simultaneously, producing a cooling rate difference between the outer edge and the core, a process so precise that even a deviation of only a few degrees leads to immediate rejection. In practice, 5 to 10% of wheels that emerge from the quench tank are deemed out of specification and must be reprocessed or discarded entirely. The machining process for a railway wheel begins in the raw material storage area. From there, the billets are transferred to the rough machining stage on a vertical CNC lathe, where the oxidized surface layer is removed and the wheel is brought to its basic geometry with the wheel tread diameter reaching approximately 35 inches. During this operation, the blank rotates at a controlled speed of 80 to 100 revolutions per minute, and the cutting force is kept steady to prevent overheating and to maintain dimensional consistency. The grooves and flanges are machined with precision, forming the foundation for the stages that follow. After rough machining, the wheel undergoes full immersion ultrasonic testing using a specialized flaw detection system to identify internal defects, ensuring that no porosity hidden cracks, or structural irregularities remain that could lead to failure during operation. Once the wheel passes inspection, it is cleaned and moved into the final machining stage, where all critical dimensions are brought to the exact specifications of the engineering drawings. At this stage, surface hardness is measured by an automated digital tester, while static balance is verified on a single-plane vertical balancing machine to ensure smooth, vibration-free, and stable rotation during service. In the finishing stage, the axle and the train wheel are coated with a specialized protective paint, a high-performance epoxy or polyurethane blend that bonds to the steel like an invisible shield. This coating blocks moisture, salt, grease, and metal dust from penetrating the surface, stopping oxidation before it even begins. It is not decorative paint, it is a lifeline insurance layer for the entire system. Right after this protective layer is completed, the wheel enters the inspection and component traceability stage. Here, technicians use a tablet to scan the identification code of the bearing assembly, verifying the correct type, the correct specifications, and the correct operating history. It only takes a few seconds to scan, but the decision it makes is critical because a single bearing installed outside its tolerance can cause vibration, overheating, and force an entire train out of service, resulting in losses of millions of dollars per day. 
The process of assembling a railway wheel set is far more than simply attaching two wheels to a steel shaft. It is one of the most precise and tightly controlled operations in the entire rail industry. After heat treatment, final machining, and static balancing, the two steel wheels are moved into a heating chamber while the axle is cooled to contract to its exact design dimension. This expansion-contraction ratio cannot deviate by more than a few thousandths of an inch as it determines the interference fit and the load transfer capability of the entire wheel set. Once the temperature differential reaches the required threshold, the two wheels are pressed onto the axle using a hydraulic press capable of exerting four to six million pounds of force, driving each wheel to its precise seating depth measured in hundredths of an inch while ensuring the correct taper and the exact gauge spacing between the two wheels. After pressing, the wheel and axle assembly is left to cool naturally, and it is this thermal contraction that creates an enormous friction fit, so strong that it requires no bolts, no welds, no adhesives, and no supplemental fasteners, yet still transmits torque, carries axle loads reaching tens of tons, and operates reliably over millions of feet of track, after assembly, the completed wheel set undergoes laser measurement, concentricity checks, dynamic balancing, and even simulated extreme load testing. Here, an optical scanning system inspects concentricity, runout, and fit-up clearances with precision down to thousandths of an inch, while vibration, temperature, and load sensors run the wheel set through conditions equivalent to real-world operation on the rails. Only when no abnormal oscillation, hotspot, or deformation beyond allowable limits is detected does the wheel and axle assembly proceed to its final ritual, identity marking. This identification code is engraved directly onto the steel rim, impossible to erase, impossible to wear away, serving as a steel passport that follows the wheel set through 20 to 30 years of service life. Even after passing every rigorous inspection and receiving its identification code, the journey of a train wheel is still far from over. From this point on, it is no longer an isolated component. It becomes the very first point of support for a machine weighing hundreds of tons that is now coming together. And to understand how this wheel integrates into that massive system, we move forward into the key stages of assembling an entire train. Inside assembly halls spanning hundreds of thousands of square feet, the bogey is built as the leg skeleton of the train. The welded steel bogey frame is secured onto a fixture where hydraulic dampers, coil springs, and bearing housings are installed in sequence. Once the bogey meets installation standards, the wheel set is lowered into the frame by an overhead crane. The bearing caps are opened, high-pressure lubricant is injected, and the entire wheel assembly is positioned into its mounts with precision measured in inches. Disc brake units, brake calipers, and speed sensors are then fitted into place, forming the braking system that will control the stopping force of the hundreds of tons above it. Right above the bogey sits the compartment that houses the massive diesel engine, the source of all the train's power. Once assembled, the engine is secured with hundreds of high-strength bolts and connected to the cooling system the oil pumps, and the intake manifolds. Beside it, the alternator is mounted directly onto the engine's main shaft. As the engine turns, the alternator converts mechanical rotation into high-capacity electrical power. That electrical power is then delivered to the traction motors mounted directly inside the bogey. And it is these traction motors that actually make the wheels turn. This is where the two processes meet. The wheel is forged to withstand the load, and the motor is engineered to turn that load into motion. Once the drivetrain and the bogey are fully assembled, the train enters its final testing phase. In the static test, engineers power up the entire electrical system and examine the brakes, sensors, and signaling circuits. Every deviation is captured by specialized diagnostic equipment, from electrical leakage to the braking force of each individual disc brake unit. Next comes the dynamic test. The entire locomotive is placed onto a massive roller test bench where resistance is simulated to match the load of pulling dozens of heavy rail cars. Temperature sensors, vibration sensors, torque meters, and wheel speed sensors operate simultaneously, 
generating thousands of data points every second. Only when the wheels spin smoothly with no hot spots, no vibrations, and perfectly calibrated braking does the locomotive move on to the final finishing stage. From the iron ore buried deep underground, to the red-hot steel that is forged, rolled, and heat-treated, from ultrasonic inspections, static balancing, and load testing, all the way to the identification code engraved onto the rim, a train wheel is never just a simple block of steel. It is the product of hundreds of precision processes, where every thousandth of a millimeter, every degree of temperature, and every microscopic deviation determines the safety of an entire train stretching hundreds of meters and the thousands of lives behind it. Share your thoughts below, and if you want to keep exploring how engineering and technology shape the world around us every single day, don't forget to like and subscribe to follow the next journeys along the rails of knowledge.